Good afternoon and welcome to CodeWare's What's New in Compressed 2016 webinar. Thank you all for joining us today. My name is Brian Jones and I am a sales engineer here at CodeWare. Amber Lindner, one of our mechanical engineers, and I will be your webinar organizers. Today we're going to demonstrate some of the new capabilities available in Compressed 2016. Please feel free to ask questions throughout the presentation by typing into the webinar control panel located on the right of your screen. We will do our best to answer as many as we can during the Q&A sessions and following the webinar, we will publicly post the answers to all of your questions online. And you can find those along with the date and times for future webinars at www.codeword.com slash webinars. Before we begin, I'd like to bring your attention to the handouts provided for you in the webinar control panel. If you expand that section, you'll find brochures for Compress, the Codeware Cloud, the Codeware Support Center, and an article describing our industry's shift towards solid modeling. Also, in celebration of our very first webinar, we are offering 20% off of new Compress license purchases for the next 30 days only and you can email sales at codeware.com for more information. All right, let's get started. To kick things off, I'd like to introduce our engineering manager and your presenter, Matt Hyland. Thank you, Brian, and welcome everybody to our webinar. We've got a really excited webinar for you today, and I'm gonna go through the new uh, 2016 features for you, so let's get right into it. So some of the topics that I'm gonna be covering for you guys today is obviously the 2015 ASME code update for Division One and Division Two. Um, a lot of people have been asking for it, so we're going to go through some of that as well, as well as some of the new features. So one, a couple of the features we went, added were you know, adding UG34 bolted covers to B16.5 or B16.47 flanges, uh, specifying nozzle services and vessel tag information, as well as adding B16.9 elbows to nozzles, and also the TEMA 9th edition for the expansion joint. So we all know it's now done through FEA. I'm going to touch on that uh, a little bit as well. And finally, how to prepare estimates. In 2016, we've introduced three new ways for us to generate bill of materials for it. So with that, let's go ahead and get into it. So I'm going to open up Compress here. And this is just one of my sample files. This is a shell and two heat exchanger that I'm going to be using. So with build 7600, what you're going to see now when you open it is down in the bottom right-hand corner, the 2015 marked. And that means you're using the 2015 edition of the code. But you can also access this code by simply coming up to our codes menu and selecting ASME. And you can select either previous editions if you want to uh, use our latest build but maybe re-rate something to an older edition, you can go in here. Or if you're using build 7510 that had the 2013 edition and you want to update an existing file to 2015, you can just simply select it right here and click OK and it'll get updated um, that way as well. You can also switch between Division 1 and Division 2 in this dialog as well. But one of the big questions we get are, what were the code changes? You know, how is this affecting vessels? Anything like that. So to get an extensive list of all the changes that we've made, what we can do is come up to the Help menu and select a View History. What this will do is actually open up our history document. And it just opened on my other screen, so I'll just drag it over here for you right here, and this is our compressed change list. Now we also have our change list for our heat exchangers, our Division II documents, um, or even inspect as well. And all of the previous bills that we've ever released are here as well. So if you click on the hyperlinks, you can quickly come down to the changes made in build 7600. And we break this out into, you know, what were some of the highlights of it, what were the other new features, as well as maintenance fixes as well. So you can see, you know, what has been changed, anything like that. But obviously the big one is the ASME 2015 edition. So I'll click on this hyperlink and you come down here and you can actually see the code changes. Now I won't go through all of this in detail, but there are a couple of ones that I want to bring to your attention. The first one is obviously the Section 2D Material Library. This is linked with our 2015 edition, so we've got that updated there for you as well. Uh, one of the other ones is uh, for the UCS 66 materials, uh, particularly UCS 66F. Impact testing is now in force for all materials with a minimum yield strength greater than 65 KSI or 450 megapascals. So I wanted to make sure you guys are aware of that one. And the other one I wanted to make you aware, and this is for our heat exchanger clients, is an updated U5 form. And why that is, I'm going to go into that momentarily, is because there were a few new inputs that we added for 2015. So I'm just going to move this out of the way. 
and come back to my sample. I'm going to click on my fixed heat exchanger sample right here. And this is another new feature I wanted to show you in addition to these uh, new inputs is uh, you'll notice that this heat exchanger has an expansion joint. So for all of our heat exchanger clients that are also using the, the TEMA rules or the TEMA 9th rules, we know that the FEA expansion joints have non or the expansion joints have gone to an FEA style of analysis. This is now included for you and compressed and the FEA is run for you automatically. So we've got that covered for you. But I was just touching on the, the inputs for the heat exchanger. So I'm going to right click on our heat exchanger and open up our, tube, our heat exchanger wizard. And what I'm going to do is simply click on my two side design conditions right here. And in 26, or 2015, the 2015 code edition I should say, we've introduced a new variable called the external operating pressure. And you're going to have this for both the tube side design conditions as well as the shell side design conditions right here. So if you folks remember from 2013, the 2013 edition introduced the internal operating pressure, the 2015 edition introduced the external operating pressure. Now where are we going to see that in the report? I'll just click OK here. I'm going to switch to my report that I've already gone ahead and run. And I'll come down here. I'm going to click on the ASME tube sheet report right here. Now, some of you may have, uh, know uh, some of our reports are collapsible, so I'll go ahead and click on the heading right here, and we'll collapse our uh, tube sheet report. Makes it a little bit easier to sift through the reports if we're, uh, I've got multiple load or design conditions, things like that. And if I click on pressures right here, you're going to see this. So the two new variables they introduced are this P sub SOX min and P sub TOX min, or uh, right here, sorry. These are going to be your external operating pressures. Now, where are we going to see this in our exchangers and the calculations? You're definitely going to see this for fixed exchangers, and you're also going to see it on floating type exchangers. So, for example, if you're considering radial differential thermal expansion, these numbers are going to come into play there. And you're going to see these throughout the rules um, used. And again, you can come down, you can expand our, the tables for each step, things like that. Now, I touched on before about the expansion joints as well, and I, I did that because we were right in this report. So the expansion joint report is right here, and this is your FEA analysis. So we can calculate your spring rates for you, and this is all done automatically for you within Compress when you specify your expansion joint. All right, so I'm going to switch back to my model right here. And what I like to do during these webinars is I want to try to get a, a sense of um, – some feedback from you. So I'm going to run a quick poll right now. And the first poll, and I'm going to leave it open for 30 seconds, is I'm just curious what market segment is everybody that's attending this? Uh, what market segment is your company in? So it should be visible for you. All right, I'm going to go ahead and close this, and I'm going to actually show the results for you. So 7% of you are owner-operators, 15% of you are EPC, 51% of you are in the fabrication market, 23% of you are in the design firm or consultant, and 4% of you are inspection and maintenance. So throughout our webinars, we're actually going to be doing a couple or a series of these. Uh, next month, I'm going to be touching on the Coder interface, so that's really going to help our fabricators. I am going to touch on that a little bit here. I'm also going to do an inspect webinar. So for the inspection and maintenance guys, we're going to be diving into that a lot, far, a lot farther too. So um, stay tuned. We've got these posts on our website and we can get these signed up. Okay, so on that note, I want to open this up for a Q&A session. So Brian had mentioned before, we do have a questions box there. So uh, Amber or Brian, feel free. If we have time, we'll answer a couple of questions now and I'll continue on to the uh, next feature. We do have a few questions from our attendees. When modeling a vessel to an older code edition, does Compress use the corresponding edition of Section 2, Part D? Yes, that question actually comes up quite a bit. Um, when you go up to the codes menu and we select ASME right here, we have all of our previous editions. So if you were to go back and select the 2010 edition, this edition is tied to that um, year Section 2D. So that's automatically taken into account for you. So you can always use our latest version of Compress and still have access to these older databases and older codes. 
If I update to build 7600, will I lose my user-defined materials in the database? That's a very good question. That's another question I get uh, a lot too. No, you do not. The user-defined materials are actually saved in the user.mdb file, and you can simply bring those forward. Actually, when we install Compress, we actually go and see, we try to detect if there's a previous version of that file, and if there is, we'll ask you if you'd like to copy it forward. Okay, our last question for this session is, is Compress backwards compatible? Uh, currently, no. Compress is only forward compatible. So if we have uh, files made in 7600, they are not backwards compatible, so I couldn't go open them and build 7400. But again, since we give you all the previous code additions and addendas, there's really no need to have a backwards compatible file. Um, I would encourage everybody, if they haven't updated, to update to the latest build. So you get obviously our new maintenance uh, fixes as well as the new features available in the Compress as well. Okay, so we're going to have some more Q&A sessions throughout the webinar, but we're going to continue on. So I'm going to switch back uh, actually to our YouTube right here. And the next item I wanted to touch on was the UG34 cover on our B16.5 blind. And I've got a nozzle modeled right here that I'll, I'll put it on this N14. And one of the reasons or questions is why did we do this? Well, the reason we are now adding a UG34 cover to a standard flange is so that we can add openings to it. So if we've got multiple openings on the cover, we can add those now. So what you'll do in Compress is simply right click on the nozzle to open it. And the dialog is the same as it's been in previous builds. So I'll click on the add ASME B16.5 slash 67 or 47 flange. And we'll come into our flange dialog. So I'll quickly add one here. I'll just put a uh, weld neck and I'll put a 300 class on it. Now what is different on this dialog is below the flange class there's an option to include blind. And as always, we have the option to do a standard blind, but now we have an option for a UG34 cover. So I'll select that. I'll select the gasket from my list right here, and then you can work your way through your dialogues. So I'll click Next here, and then again, just work your way through the dialogues, and then that bolted cover has now been modeled onto the flange. So then from here, work my way through the nozzle dialog, and there's my UG34 cover attached to my flange, like so. And again, I mentioned one of the reasons, the main reason for doing this is so that we can put additional nozzles on there. So as you guys know, we um, attach these covers. You know, we pass the flange geometry into our Appendix 2 analysis. We have to get the bolt loads, which then plays into the bolted cover. So if I wanted to attach a nozzle onto this cover, again, I can simply come up to my nozzle menu, select Detailed Design, and I can attach it there. So I'll just take a small coupling. I'll just look this up quickly. And then I'll locate it on the end of my bolted cover. And then again, there's our nozzle attached onto our UG34 cover that way. All right, so before, um, one other new feature I wanted to show you guys was the nozzle service input and the vessel tag. Um, and again, why did we put this in? This is really for our EPC customers who are dealing with plant layouts. They want to get this information from our solid model over to their systems. So you may have seen on this uh, nozzle, or I'll actually open up this one right here, this N6. There's a new input for the nozzle service, and it's right under the identifier right here. So under service, you can select any of these uh, rules. So you can have your drain, your feed inlet, uh, level indicators, if it's a pressure gauge, process nozzle, anything like that. You can also edit these service rules. So for example, if you've got your own descriptions, you can actually add them in here and they'll be retained in the list as well. Now the purpose of this was so that we can export it with our solid model file. So if you bring this into any plant layout programs, uh, AutoCAD Plant 3D, or even Inventor or SolidWorks, this information is going to be brought over for you. And then the other input was the vessel tag information. Um, and this is actually accessed through our action menu up here. And there's a selection here for vessel general info. And this has our general information, such as our location, purchaser, vessel name, PO number. We've always had this. But now we have this tag information right here. And I can actually set this up. So as we all know, E, or the heat exchanger, usually designated with a class E. We can put our tag number. And again, we can specify the service it's in. And we've pre-populated this list for you, but again, we can add stuff in here if we need to. And I'll click OK. 
Okay, so with that, I want to take another quick poll um, with everybody. And the next one is, I'm really curious to know what version of Compress are you using? So I'll go ahead and launch that. And then I'm going to open it up to a Q&A session. I'm, and I uh, have to apologize. I forgot to mention to you guys before, we actually have just short of 780 people registered for this webinar. So if I don't get to your question today, don't worry. I will actually be posting these uh, questions up online after, as Brian pointed out. All right, so I'll go ahead and close that, and I'll share the results with you. So 66% of you have updated to build 7600. 11% are using 7510. 10% are using 7500. 7% are using older compressed builds, and 6% of you are new to this, and you're not using Compress. So I'll go ahead and hide that. Okay, so at this point, Amber or Brian, has any have any new questions come in? Yes. What code are the elbows and other connections analyzed in accordance to? Uh, good question. Actually, I've, you may have seen these elbows. Uh, most of you have updated to the latest build, so you know that the elbows are available. How we broke this up is if it's modeled within what we call our Division One document. So when you go file new Division One vessel, we're going to treat it as such. So what that means is that the elbow, the pipe, and the flanges will uh, be modeled in the Division One, and with the elbows, it's going to be UG44. Um, if it's not part of that or, you know, depending on what jurisdiction you're in, uh, if it's not, if they want it done to another code, just simply uh, remove it from the model uh, that way. Uh, there's always debate or discussion of when does the pressure vessel end and when does piping pick up. Um, so right now we model them to UG44. Can we add more than one nozzle to a UG34 cover? Yes, uh, that was actually one of the benefits of going with the UG34 covers. That allows us to add multiple nozzles onto the cover. How does Compress analyze the standard B165, B1647 flange when a UG34 cover is attached? What we've done is we, since we have to get the, the bolt loads for that cover, we actually pass the geometry through our Appendix 2 rules. And then that, in turn, will uh, transfer that knowledge over to the UG34 calculations, and that's how we're designing it. Okay. Are jacketed vessels available and compressed? I was uh, wondering when that question was going to come up. Um, jacketed vessels um, are actively being worked on. So for people that are designing them or have been waiting for them, I assure you, you're not going to be disappointed later on this year, so I would encourage you to stay tuned. Um, uh, jacketed vessels will be coming in Compress. Okay, our last question for this session is, how do I update from an older build to 7600? There are actually a couple of ways of updating. Um, probably the easiest way, if you're already using Compress, is to simply come up to the Help menu right here and select Get Updates. What this will do is reach out um, to our servers, grab the update, and you can actually download it. You can also go to our uh, website and log into the support center, go to our downloads page, and you can also download it that way as well. But like I said, probably the easiest way is to go to the help menu and select get updates that way. All right, so finally, one of the things I wanted to go into was um, the last topic was preparing estimates. and. No, we, like I mentioned before, we introduced three new ways of generating a bill of materials in Compress in 2016. The first way is actually through Compress specific, or directly. So you may have noticed when I was in this report, and I'll switch here, is that under the summary reports on the left, there's a new bill of materials report right here. And we broke this up. Um, obviously, we've got our heads, covers, tube sheets, our shell and tubes, nozzles and elbows, our fittings and flanges. What you can do here is if you can, you know, take this information directly and, uh, you know, get a quick estimate or a quote, you can. You can also highlight all of this information and you can actually copy it into Excel. Um, I've spoken with a number of fabricators that, you know, really want to get a bill of materials into Excel. So that's one way of getting a bill of materials. But since we're on the topic of Excel, why don't we just take it in there directly? So what I'm going to do uh, is show you, we've introduced a cost or utility now with 7600. 
And this utility is included at no additional charge uh, with the current support and update service subscription. So if you need to get the bill of materials over to Excel, I'm going to actually pull up our support site right here, our website. I'm going to come over here. So this is our codeware.com website. And in the top right-hand corner, I'm going to click Login. Now, this is where you also come if you want to load into our, or, uh, log into your cloud account, as well as the Support Center. So I'll click on Support Center right here, and it'll take us to a login screen. Now, I'm a current employee of Codeware, so I'll click here. Now, if you don't have your user credentials, anything like that, no problem. Just send an email in to us, and we'll be happy to get you set up with that. So I'll click on that. And it's going to bring me to, my, to our support center. Now, when you're in here, what we're going to do is click on Downloads right here. And you'll come in. And this is, as I was saying before, if you also want to download Compress or Inspect, you can do it from within here. But I'm going to click Download Cost or Utility. This is going to take you to the uh, article page. We'll you know, give you the system requirements, you know, how do you use it, things like that. I'm going to click on the Cost or Utility link right here. I'm just going to save the file, and it's going to download. And I'm just going to drag this over to my desktop, and it'll come down as a zip file. And you just need to extract it, and it'll actually extract an Excel file. So if I go and open it, I'm just going to double-click and open it. We're going to open Excel. So this is, our, this is Coster. So the first thing you're going to have to do is enable the security on it. So with the security warning, click on Options and enable this content, and then click OK. So what you're looking at is uh, obviously Excel, but in the top right-hand corner, you're going to see a Codeware tab right here. And this is where we're going to come and load in our XML 3D file, which I'm going to show you how to export from Compress. We also have Preferences, as well as uh, you, know, you can delete sheets. If you've got multiple uh, sheets open, you can delete them. One thing we've done differently with uh, Coster is we've also released a source code for you as well. So if you want to customize this uh, to meet your company needs or tailor it a little bit more to your needs, you can. Um, in Excel, you can actually add a developer tab right here. So if you open Excel and you don't see it, don't worry. Just go over to the Start menu, select Excel options, and there's an option there to load in the, the uh, developer tab. And then what you can do is click on Visual Basic and you can access the source code. So this is the source code we've used here, and you can simply access any of it, and then you can tailor it further to your needs. But let's go ahead and export that XML 3D file I was just talking to you about. So I'll come back to Compress, and we're going to take this, this heat exchanger. Now to export an XML 3D file, you simply click on this 3D button with the arrow underneath. This is our solid model export button. And I'll export it out here, and click Save. Now, it'll take a, uh, maybe a second or two, and then it'll tell us our model has been exported successfully, and then we'll be, we'll be good to go. All right, so it's been exported. So what I can do is come back here to my Excel sheet, and I can load that file in. So I can click on Codeware, click Open XML 3D, and I can go and locate that file. So I'll just click on it and click Open. What this will do is then populate a bill of materials for me. Now, a couple of extra things we've added in the cost utility. Now, I brought in a YouTube because I wanted to show this to our heat exchanger clients. There's also a bend schedule available in this um, Excel sheet. So, we'll have the basic information here, you know, our vessel name, you know, the compressed build number, the code edition, things like that. And we've broken this up into our, our main components, so shells, channels, heads, um, as well as our nozzles and elbows, and we've grouped everything, flange items, and so forth. But down at the bottom here, I have a bend schedule available. So as you can see, we've got our tube row, and I'm just minimizing this just so you can see everything. We've got our bend radius, our bend diameter, bend length, straight length, cut length, as well as develop length here as well. So for the estimators in the, uh, the heat exchanger industry, you can get that as well. But what we've also done is given you a couple columns. Um, you know, when I've spoken with the vast majority of cost estimators out there, really what they wanted was a bill of material and ability to enter in the cost per pound of steel as well as a cost factor. So I'll just put some numbers in here. I can put in what the cost of steel is, and I can start entering in my own cost factors for my shop standard. And we can get a rough estimate of what this is going to cost, you know, so then when we get the quote, we can then pass the files on to engineering to do further uh, design drafting 
uh, things like that. So that's the second way to get a bill of materials out of Compress. Now, uh, like I said, what I would do is encourage you to log on to the uh, Support Center and download it. Um, I've shown you also how you can customize it. But if you have some suggestions, we'd love to hear from our clients. So I'd love to hear, you know, is there things you'd like to see differently? You know, would you like to see things broken out in different columns? Uh, you know, maybe you're trying to tie this into our ERP system. We might be able to help you out. So please, I encourage you, email support at codeword.com. Let us know if you have any feedback on this, and we can see what we can do for you. All right, so the next feature or way we can get a bill of materials actually through SolidWorks, and I'm going to show this to you momentarily, but before I get into that, I'm just going to run a quick poll, and this is the last one, and I'm curious to know what drafting software is everybody using. So I'm going to go ahead and launch that. All right, I'll leave it open for 10 more seconds. All right, I'll go ahead and close that, and I share this on the screen with you. So 18% of you are using SolidWorks, and 18% of you is using Vendor. So that's, that's great. And 53% of you are, are using AutoCAD, 1% is using SolidEdge, and 10% are using something else. Okay, so before I get into SolidWorks, why don't we have a quick Q&A session, uh, just since I, I touched on these topics. So, Amber, uh, were there any questions that came in? Yes, we do have one question. Does Compress need to be installed to be able to use the Coster tool? No, it does not. Uh, actually, all it needs is that XML 3D file. So if you've got cost estimators off in a different area, or they don't have access to Compress, it's not a problem. Uh, but if they do want to get an, an accurate model, you just have to have the designer um, export that XML 3D file, and they can send it over to them uh, that way. So, all right, so on that note, let's, let's jump into SolidWorks. And I'm using SolidWorks today to uh, showcase it. I'm going to open it up. Now, I had already gone ahead and exported this model. So this is the YouTube exchanger that you saw on Compress that I exported into SolidWorks. And it takes, you know, generally time uh, to bring it in. I'm just taking a section view so you can see the model here. Um, if you want to see the inside of the YouTube. Um, but depending on the size of the vessel, it can take anywhere from 10 seconds, 20 seconds, sometimes a minute, uh, depending on the complexity or how many components you have. But it really doesn't take very long. Okay. So, what is the codeware interface? And often, people often ask me this, is the coder interface is a bridge between um, Compress and solid modeling platforms. Uh, we've currently uh, supported Autodesk Inventor as well as SolidWorks. Um, and then I know people are using this for AutoCAD plant, plant 3D as well. And we're trying to bridge those gaps. So what we do is we recreate the model for you in these platforms. And we bring this in as what we call an assembly. An assembly is really a collection of all the parts that we've modeled in Compress. And when we bring it over, we have our assembly, and it's organized in a part tree right here. So, for example, the tube sheet. When we remodeled it, we have to bring over, you know, the information. Like, what was it made out of? Uh, what were the sketches? How do we actually build that? So we've essentially recreated these parts. Um, I've recently published a white paper on, you know, why I think that the industry is moving towards solid model and what are the benefits. Um, you know, very oftentimes people ask me, you know, this is a pretty picture, but I have to get fabrications out to the drawing. How is this going to help me? Where this is going is that all the information from Compress is getting moved over here. So things like our nominal thicknesses, MAWPs, MAPs, things like that, that we've calculated are getting associated with this model. And you can open up any of these uh, parts. You can edit them further if you need to. Um, and you can have a look at the properties. So I said all that information from Compress is being brought over. So under any assembly or property, if I click on the properties tab right here, you can see all the information that we've brought over. So we have things like how much the, does the vessel weigh? What's the shell side MAWP? What's the shell side design MDMT? Things like that. Where this is useful is that if I have to transfer this over to a drawing or to another uh, you know, file format, like if you wanted, maybe perhaps run a CFD on this YouTube, you can hook into these and set them up as user-defined properties. But I was talking about how do I get a um, bill of materials so let's do that. So let's make a quick drawing of this heat exchanger. 
So how I would do this is I would simply come up here to the file menu and in SOLIDWORKS it's really easy. You just simply select make drawing from assembly. And it'll ask you for a template and with our coder interface we've actually installed um, templates uh, for you. So I'll just take a D size heat exchanger and these are installed automatically and I'll click OK and it'll open up a drawing sheet. Now one of the nice things about using solid modeling programs is that it's tied in with any sketches that you bring over, any views that represent, because the views are based off the solid model. And this is our template right here. I've actually gone ahead and made a nameplate as well as uh, design data for you. And you can kind of see these property values in here. So I'm going to go ahead and drag a view over. I'm going to show you why I'm a big fan of these programs. So I'll just take the current view, which is just a nice little, I'll just drag and drop it here, and I'll do a quick rebuild. Now if you zoom back in, all that information that we've calculated from Compress has now been brought over. So our MAWPs that we're going to stamp on the nameplate are in here, uh, our RTs, things like that, the weights, and then the design data. Now keep in mind, this is what I would probably put on a drawing, but you can set your tables up however you like. So if you want things ordered a bit differently or you want different information, you can actually fill these out. But how would I get a bill of material out of this? Well, remember I said that all the properties from Compress have been brought over? Well, we can tap into that. So if you select this sketch, I can click on my annotation tab, and we can click on the tables heading right here and select bill of materials very, very easily. And there's actually a couple options with these. Uh, I'm going to show you some other things like getting a bend schedule after this as well. But I'm going to click on the, the bill of material and click open. And again, these uh, tables or templates have actually been included with you with uh, build 7600. We keep adding uh, to these every time we release a build. And I'm going to click OK here. So there's a table dropped in. So I've got things like my item number, my quantity, my part identifier, material, description, all that information. Now this is not hard coded. So unlike generic drawing programs where, you know, this is what you get. You can set this up however you like. You know, some people may say, I really want to see the material on the right-hand side of the column. So you can simply select it and drag and drop it. You can put it over there. You can also change what property you want. For example, if you don't want material specification there, you want something else like, I want to know the MAWP of all the components. All those properties that I just showed you can be transferred over here that way. And then all you would do is simply right-click on the table, select Save As, and you can save this as your new table. And then you've got a working bill of material. But this isn't just limited to uh, bill of materials. What if you want a nozzle schedule or a nozzle cut list? How long do the nozzles need to be? Again, I'll just select this, select my bill of materials, and I can open up a preset nozzle schedule right here. I've also got a bend schedule on a slip-on weld table in here for you as well. Now the nice thing about using the solid modeling programs is that you can also do things uh, and set up what we call configurations. And you may hear this term, you know, what is a configuration? A configuration is essentially a group of components that we want to lump together. So I could put all the nozzles under a configuration, I can put the bundle details, anything like that. So for the nozzle schedule, obviously I'm really only interested to see nozzles on it. So I'll select my nozzle configuration, click OK. And there is a nozzle schedule here for you. And again, just like that bill of materials, if you want to drag things around or you want to change the properties, you can actually do that um, here and save it as well. Again, the nozzle service has been brought over. That was something we introduced in uh, build 7600. And again, since I have a YouTube in here, let's go ahead and put a bend schedule on this. So let me just go open up the tubes assembly like so, because I want it just to reference the tubes. And I'll actually just do that, and I can just, I'll bring the two bundle over like so. I'm going to highlight it, and go to my tables. Actually, I'm going to click OK. Come up here to my tables, click Bill of Materials, and let's add a bend schedule in here as well. So as you can see, there's my bend schedule. You can also put what we call blocks in here. So if you want to see, well, what is a flat length, cut length, what does this all mean? You can actually come up here. You can insert blocks if you'd like. And we can actually set this up. So that this has to go to the shop floor. 
you can start dragging and dropping these around your drawing or set them up as a preset template and essentially these tables will get auto filled in and it's really good for the customization part um, of what we're facing nowadays in the industry. So again, I encourage you guys, uh, part of the handouts is a white paper about going into the solid modeling a little bit more. Now I kind of just scratched the surface, um, but if you'd like to see more, I will be doing a demonstration um, of this in a future uh, webinar. Um, actually, on that note, one other thing I wanted to show you was I had mentioned before CFD. Um, I made a quick video of this because I was work, I was uh, uh, took this heat exchanger out uh, last week and was playing with the CFD model within SolidWorks. But you can actually run this uh, within their simulation and get an idea of what's going on. So for any of the analysts out there, that's another tool at your disposal uh, when you're looking at these heat exchangers. So that's available as well. Okay. So on that note, what I'm going to do is turn it over for a Q&A session. So Amber, has anything come in? Yes, we do have a few questions from our attendees. Are all editions of SolidWorks and Inventor compatible with the Codeware interface? Uh, not currently. What we do here at Codeware is we support the latest two versions of the software. So for SolidWorks, we support uh, the 2016 version and the 2015 version. Um, I have heard of people using on older ones, um, but officially the latest two are supported, and that would be the same with the Autodesk Inventor as well. Is it possible to import a SolidWorks or Inventor file back into Compress? Uh, currently, no. We're not actually allowing the models to come back. It's a one-directional um, export. However, it is something that we're looking into. Uh, we're trying to solve the round trip problem, as I like to call it. You know, once it goes into SolidWorks, you make revisions. How do we get it back in? So it is something we've been discussing over here, but currently it's a, it's a one-directional export. Is the weld detail included in the solid model? Oh, that's a very good question. Currently what is brought over are the geometries. Um, that is, again, something we're, we're tying it into to see how we can bring the weld geometries over. But with the ease of the model, you can actually simply, you know, uh, connect your bevels or you can actually use the SolidWorks uh, welding uh, dimensioning tool within SolidWorks as well. But it is something that we want to start addressing is putting the bevels on the um, seams, I should say. Uh, so that when we start exporting drawings, things like that, that is all there. Does Compress integrate with any other software besides SolidWorks and Inventor, such as SmartPlant 3D? Ah, that's a very good question. Um, there's actually a few. Uh, we do have an interface with HTRI, which stands for Heat, uh, Heat Transfer Research Incorporated. So we have a bi-directional interface that way, so we can load in their thermal files, you know, perform the mechanical calculations, and then we can export it back to uh, HTRI to check the thermal performance. Um, uh, we are, I know we can export into AutoCAD Plant 3D, and we are actually um, beginning to talk to uh, Smart Plant 3D. Um, so something that we're working on is uh, trying to get our models like, across to many other platforms. So we're hoping in the near future that we'll have a direct export to Auto or uh, Plant 3D, or Smart Plant 3D, I should say. How do I get the templates that you mentioned? The templates for SOLIDWORKS are actually automatically downloaded. So when you go to the support center and you download uh, the Coder interface and you install it, and we know what uh, you're running. So if, you, if you've got SOLIDWORKS, the installer knows I'm going to install for SOLIDWORKS or it's going to install for Inventor. The templates are automatically downloaded. However, you can also go in and download them. Let me just open up the uh, support center again and I'll show you where to go. All right, so here it is. So what you would do is, again, click Login, log into the Support Center. And then under Downloads, you could come in and click Download Coder Interface, and you can get it that way. Uh, this is also where you come if you guys want to contact us, too. So if you had questions to support, you could click Contact Support here. You could also submit a case to us and then we would get it over here as well. Uh, the nice thing about doing it this way is we'll actually uh, comb our knowledge base as well. So a lot of times if you're in a hurry, you can quickly get your answer and continue on with your work. Okay, when importing into SolidWorks, is the solid model just a solid body or is it feature-based part? 
it's a feature-based part. That is something that uh, what I consider, what I call a solid model is something as if, you know, the designer had to make the sketches, extrude it, and put the features on it. So, for example, let's take one of our parts here. Uh, where's my, let's take the shell. So let me open up the shell and I'll show you. So when you open it up, this is our shell, and you'll see on the left here, you know, we've assigned the ASME material, so you got SA5, 16, grade 70, but I've also given you all the sketches and the features we've used to create the model. So you can actually go in and edit this. So instead of getting these generic uh, file formats, you know, DSF, DXF comes to mind, um, things like that, you're actually getting a feature-based model. Um, now within Compress, you can actually export STEP and ACES files if you wish, but I would highly encourage you if you are using these solid modeling programs to use that XML 3D file so you get a proper model um, in these programs. Okay, and our last question for this session is, you showed us how to import the bill of materials into SolidWorks. Are you going to also show us that for Inventor as well? Uh, yes, uh, I'm actually going to do, I, I decided to use SolidWorks today to showcase um, our products. The workflow that I just showed you is identical in Inventor, and we're actually going to be doing another webinar next month specifically on Inventor. Um, however, if you're curious, feel free to contact us. Uh, we can always set up one-on-one uh, -on -one sessions with you. So if you're using Inventor and you're just a little curious and you, you know, you're looking to switch over, uh, feel free to contact us. We'll be happy to go through what we can offer you on the interface for Inventor as well. Okay, so on that note, I appreciate everybody uh, submitting questions. Like I said, I'm going to be going through this um, afterwards, and if I didn't get to your question, I will definitely be going through them afterwards, and we're going to be posting them online. So just to recap for everybody, uh, the ASME 2015 code update, uh, we released build 7600 last December with the 2015 code edition, so our Division 1 and our Division 2 has been updated. Our cloud version is, was also updated as well. Uh, as far as new features, we've got our UG34 bolted covers attached to B165 flanges, and we can now specify nozzle services and vessel tag information, um, attaching elbows to uh, nozzles, as well as our Team of Ninth expansion joints for FEA. So again, if you're using the Team of Ninth edition, that FEA is going to be taken care of for you automatically, as well as three new ways to generate a bill of materials. So with that, I'd like to thank everybody for attending our very first webinar. Uh, we're looking forward to hosting more. Um, and on that note, I'll, I'll hand this back over to Brian. Thanks, Matt. Uh, thank you, everyone, for tuning in with us today. If you typed in a question that we didn't get to, please go to www.codeware.com slash webinars for answers to all of the questions that we received today. Um, here you can also register for future webinars. Coming up next month, we'll be discussing how to create drawings in SolidWorks and in Vinner uh, from models created and compressed. So be sure to clear your schedules and come join us uh, for the Codeware Interface Series.